Good afternoon, everybody. So for the last three months, we have been working on the cause electronic uh, business and electronic commerce. And today we will be closing uh, the course with a few final remarks. The objective of this course has been to provide a comprehensive uh, introduction to the theory and practice of e-business and e-commerce. So basically, it's not an advanced uh, course, but actually the aim is to provide an introduction uh, to, to the theory and practice of uh, e-business and e-commerce. And this objective is uh, divided into three folds. The first one being to provide an introduction to basic uh, principles of business and how these uh, principles are applied in uh, e-business and e-commerce. And the second uh, sub-objective was to review different approaches that are used in developing electronic business strategy and applications. And the last one was to examine practical management issues involved with creating and maintaining uh, e-business solutions. So we kind of uh, went through uh, at an introductory level, uh, the different aspects uh, about e-commerce and e-business from basic concepts and principles to management uh, issues that are involved when it comes to managing uh, electronic business. Now, to achieve uh, this objective, the course was divided into three main parts. So, so the first part uh, consisted of uh, foundational topics, and the second part was about strategy and applications, and the third one was about implementation. So we had uh, about five uh, topics that were foundational uh, topics. We started with some basic principles of uh, business. We then talked about introduction to e-business and e-commerce, which is actually the core uh, of the course. And then we discussed some issues about uh, market analysis uh, for e-commerce. And then we discussed man management uh, issues uh, in, when it comes to managing digital business uh, infrastructure. And we talked about uh, electronic environment. So in this first uh, section, we we, we began with a uh, uh, discussion on value and value creation, and whereby we said any business can only survive if it creates value. And this value, we are talking about the stakeholders, people that are affected either directly or indirectly by the business. But of course, in the beginning, we, we started by focusing on the uh, uh, consu uh, consumer value and this is uh, well, the people that actually make a business uh, exist. If you cannot create a product that eventually will sell in the market, then it's obvious that you cannot exist in the market. So we, we focus on the uh, creation of value for uh, consumers. And we said in that class, it's very important that we determine the expectations of our customers because that's what defines value. Va value is based on their expectations. And if we are able to deliver uh, a product that either meets or exceeds the expectation. And by expectation, I mean the perceived uh, value. Then we will have an opportunity to charge a high price. And a high price will allow us uh, to obtain a margin that is uh, an excess of the costs we incur to produce uh, those goods or uh, services. Then we talk about the causal chain when it comes to value uh, creation, that is cause and effect, the main uh, factors that we, con uh, we, we consider when it comes to value creation. And we say in order to create value, all organizations first need to have resources, and these could be capital, information, entrepreneurial skills, and so on. So whatever kind of resources you can imagine, whether it's a, a production plant, uh, human resources, uh, knowledge, all these are inputs that are injected into the production process to create either goods or services. But 
in order uh, to do that, you also need to engage in activities. So all uh, businesses engage in some forms of uh, activities, whether it's uh, uh, inbound and uh, outbound logistics, whether it's uh, production, whether it's marketing, human resources management, financial management, all these are activities that when brought together, they help to create value. And to, to whom do we create that value? In this case, we focus on customers because these are the people that eventually uh, pay for what we produce and that help us to stay uh, in the market. But all, we do that in order also to satisfy owners. These are people that invest in our uh, uh, business. So we assume that there are people that have injected their capital into this business and they have their needs. And of course, these people want a return on their investment. So we need to consider this. But also we say uh, there are more stakeholders to businesses than just customers and owners. We also need to think about the local community in which we operate, trade organizations, competitors, of course. So all these uh, groups of individuals and organizations that are affected by our business have to be taken into uh, consideration. But it's also need to, we need to understand that in a market space, we will not be alone. No, always there will be other uh, firms, and these are competitors. So it's very important that we are able to uh, stay competitive, either by uh, differentiating ourselves uh, in terms of cost or in terms of uh, quality. So we talked about uh, main two types of uh, co competitive advantage, and that is differentiating, uh, differentiation, whereby you produce uh, products that are different from what your competitors or your rivals are producing, or you can offer the same products but sell them at a lower uh, cost, and that can help you uh, to stay uh, competitive. Of course, we, we explode a lot of things around, but I'm just uh, giving an highlight of what uh, we discuss. And then we came to the core of the course, and that is the digital uh, business. And by this, uh, we, we started by referring back to what uh, I said about the causal chain uh, in value creation. That is, uh, businesses do activities in order to create value. Now, what digital business is about is to use digital technologies in conducting those activities in order to improve the performance of the uh, business. So, with digital business, it's nothing new. We focus in the same uh, core activities that organizations are engaged with, whether it's human resources, whether it's inbound logistics, whether it's uh, production. But with this, we try to apply digital technologies in order to improve the performance of these activities. And when uh, digital technologies are applied across the, the entire value chain, and in this I mean uh, with in the internal activities as well as uh, activities that are linking the organization to uh, external uh, 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 parties such as customers and suppliers. This becomes the digital uh, business. And when we apply this to facilitate transactions is what we call e-commerce. And this could be uh, the sell side, uh, that is uh, our interaction with customers, or it could be the buy side, and that is the inter facilitation of uh, interaction with suppliers using digital technologies. Now, digital technologies uh, uh, can affect all kinds of uh, activities within uh, an organization, but there are key uh, three uh, processes within an organization where the impact of digital technologies is far more reaching. And we are talking about uh, production processes, uh, customer-focused uh, processes, and here we are talking about sales uh, management and uh, marketing, and of course, management of internal uh, processes. Uh, may, these are main processes where uh, digital technologies can, fa can have a, a far-reaching uh, impact. And also, we, we saw that Increasingly, uh, more and more organizations are transforming their businesses by applying uh, digital technologies. So whether it's an uh, application of uh, social media, uh, mobile computing, big data, and today we have the Internet of Things. So th there is uh, a movement 
whereby companies, uh, including uh, traditional companies, are trying to apply these uh, digital technologies to improve the performance of their uh, activities. And this is what we call uh, digital uh, business uh, transformation. Of course, uh, as I, I pointed out uh, earlier, an organization doesn't uh, exist in a vacuum. Usually, businesses exist in an environment, and this is true to digital uh, businesses as well. And there is a, uh, a distinction between micro environment and uh, macro environment in the sense that in the micro, env micro environment has immediate effects to the organization. You have uh, direct uh, interaction with this and you, have, you can have uh, control over these factors. I'm talking about uh, competitors, suppliers, intermediaries, uh, customers. And this is true to uh, digital uh, businesses. So we, we, we saw, we discussed each of these, uh, but we paid much more attention to uh, intermediaries where we discussed uh, the role of uh, search engines, the role of social media uh, networks, uh, third-party uh, uh, sites, and those kind of uh, uh, intermediaries that are found uh, in the internet space. But also, we need to consider the macro environment factors. These are factors that we cannot influence directly, but they have an impact uh, on our business. So, so we talked about the changes in technology, economic factors, legal factors, cultural uh, factors, the society, the, the changes in, for instance, uh, preferences in the, in the uh, society, changes in uh, ethical standards, uh, moral uh, factors. So these are factors that we need uh, to observe. And as we said uh, in that lecture, uh, any business that wants to stay competitive, you have to keep on scanning the environment. Scanning the environment means you observe what is going on uh, in the uh, environment. Uh, for instance, uh, currently, there is a serious crisis with oil prices. And for a country like Norway, where most businesses are intertwined to uh, oil industry in one way or another, it, it has a far-reaching uh, impact. It, could not be, it may not be a, a direct impact, but uh, it's an economic uh, uh, factor or it's an economic situation that can affect uh, your business. Imagine you are uh, you're providing consulting uh, services uh, in Norway. You may not be affected directly by uh, oil prices, but imagine your clients are companies such as uh, Statoil and other companies that are in the oil industry. Most likely your business will decline as their business uh, decline. The, their demand for your services might decline. So what, what we are following the decline in oil prices. So what we are saying is if you are a manager for a digital business, then you have to make sure that you keep on scanning your environment and adjust yourself uh, to the changes that are happening in the industry. And as part of that topic, we also uh, discussed uh, business models. Uh, this is uh, an increasing uh, uh, important uh, uh, concepts that many business managers today are concerned with because increasingly more managers are realize that the competition uh, base today may not be on the products you are creating, but it may base on the business model that you're using. And when we talk about business model, we refer to how you create value, how you deliver that value, and how you capture the value. So here we discussed uh, what business model is, and also we looked at different uh, uh, online business uh, models that are applied by companies today. And we also looked at different ways through which uh, online companies generate uh, revenue. But we also went through uh, uh, a powerful tool for summarizing your business model, and that is the business model converts. Now, this is different from a, a business plan in the sense that this allows you in one page to, give, uh, to, to provide you with an overview of the key aspects of your uh, business. And that's the difference between uh, a business model, a uh, uh, canvas, and a uh, business plan. In a business plan is much more uh, detailed. But in this case, in a, uh, in a very summarized fashion, you consider all the important aspects of your business which gives you uh, a, a quick uh, overview of what your business looks like. And with that, you can easily 
find uh, potential pitfalls of your business. And then we also uh, talked about uh, digital business uh, infrastructure, and these are examples of uh, resources that in order to uh, uh, implement the digital business uh, strategies, we need to have uh, hardware, software, networks, uh, technologies, which can uh, allow us to implement our uh, strategies. And it's very important uh, that we pay attention to this as managers because issues such as uh, uh, speed and general performance of the, uh, the technologies or the hardware or software or whatever we are using has an implication on the satisfaction uh, of customers, for instance. And the main uh, question that ma managers would uh, ask is whether we have these uh, technologies in-house or we outsource. Then we, we talked about uh, concepts such as uh, software as a service, where you don't need to keep, uh, the, uh, say, for instance, uh, uh, applications within your uh, organization. Instead, you can outsource it by uh, acquiring them through the cloud as provided by uh, a, a third party um, uh, company. And the second part was about uh, strategy. So the first part was mostly to lay foundation and to provide under, uh, understanding of the different concepts that are used. So basically, we went through most of the uh, terminologies that are yeah, used uh, when it comes to electronic uh, business. But in the second part, that was uh, the core of the cause, and that is an approach to creating strategy. So in the market, as I said, there are uh, many uh, companies or many businesses that are also looking for uh, uh, profits. They want to stay competitive as much as you, you, you do. So in this part, we were concerned about how we can systematically uh, create uh, a strategy that can help us stay competitive. So we started with a, a general uh, framework on how we, we create uh, a strategy. So this was a generic uh, uh, strategy, but if you can recall that lecture, I say uh, there are different ways one can uh, approach strategy uh, creation, but this was a kind of a, a summary of all those different uh, ways uh, you can use. So this is pretty much a, a standard approach to creating uh, a, a strategy. And then we said, now since uh, different functional areas within an organization implement digital solutions in different ways, so we had discussion on specific uh, 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 functional areas. And where we started with uh, supply chain uh, management. And as I said in that uh, lecture, supply chain management is uh, about optimization of the flows uh, that are involved in, in supply chains. We are talking about material flows. We are talking about information. And of course, from consumers uh, backwards to suppliers, we are talking about flow of Funds. So in this case, we want to make sure that we want to use digital uh, technologies to ensure that, we, that there is uh, efficient uh, sharing of information among the different actors that are involved in the supply chain, but also to facilitate the movement of uh, materials. Uh, we, we know that uh, at each stage, value is added to the uh, material, and those materials are passed on all the way to the consumers. And what digital technologies uh, do in this case is to facilitate these uh, flows, to, to make sure that we get the products uh, to the right customer at the right uh, uh, time, the right cost. And then we looked at uh, uh, e-procurement. Traditionally, uh, procurement uh, has been viewed as, uh, uh, as a cost center. It was not regarded as uh, that much important function in an organization. But over time, thanks to technologies, more and more uh, organizations are realized that procurement is one of the strategic uh, areas within an organization. So there are so many uh, companies now that capitalize on technologies uh, to, to engage in procurement approaches in ways that were never done before. So with, uh, with, uh, as far as procurement is concerned, what digital technologies uh, do is 
to provide uh, uh, possibilities for exploring the uh, procurement uh, uh, function in a, in a way that we can contribute to, uh, to value created within an organization. So when it comes to uh, searching for uh, suppliers, it's not with the digital technologies, it gives a lot, so much uh, power uh, to the buying organization in, in terms of the possibilities to, to evaluate, to, to compare different uh, alternatives, but even uh, uh, in ways of uh, uh, attracting uh, 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 potential suppliers. So the main point is when it comes to e-procurement is uh, how you apply digital technologies to create value through uh, procurement function. And then we talk about uh, digital marketing. Perhaps this is one of the functions where the digital technology has had uh, a far-reaching uh, effect than any other uh, function. So with this, we, talk, we, we, we uh, discuss about how companies uh, identify, anticipate, and satisfy their customers, of course, profitably by using digital te technologies. And you remember our discussion on uh, inbound marketing, where companies uh, increasingly have the ability to target uh, customers, and in that way, being able to engage customers by providing them uh, products that are relevant to those uh, uh, customers. So through digital technologies, companies have been able to uh, gain so much uh, knowledge about uh, customers, and this is good because it allows them to maximize the experience of these uh, customers. And of course, uh, we then talked about customer relationship uh, management, and this was uh, in a recognition of the fact that it's very difficult to obtain uh, a customer. It might be very costly. Imagine all those uh, advertising uh, costs that you, ha you have to incur. The, sometimes you have to make uh, sales uh, uh, calls. You have to uh, engage, uh, say, in promotional activities. So it costs a lot of money to be able to attract or to capture a customer. And for that reason, it's very important we maintain these customers because if we lose them, it will cost a, a lot more money to get, get them back. And that's why we discussed uh, about uh, customer relationship uh, uh, management. And in this case, we talk about using technologies to engage your customers, uh, to keep your, uh, your uh, customers, to maintain them. Then the last part was about uh, implementation, and that is uh, uh, all the things that we learned from the introductory part, uh, the strategy part, and now we try to look at how we can implement this. And these were divided into three uh, subtopics, and that's the change management, analysis and design, and digital business service impl implementation. So with change uh, management, here we looked at how we can introduce uh, the digital solutions within an organization and the different uh, factors that you need uh, to consider when it comes to uh, uh, introducing uh, digital solutions uh, within an organization. And then we say there are four main uh, factors uh, that are aspects that will be changed or will be affected by introducing um, uh, digital solutions. And the first one is the the market and the business model. So usually when you implement uh, digital solutions, it's very likely that you may have to change your business model, that the way you create your value, how you uh, deliver and capture it is completely different. So you can think of, uh, uh, of all the uh, modern companies or many companies that have had to go through restructuring as a result of uh, introducing uh, digital uh, uh, solutions and this is very obvious because sometimes when you introduce digital solutions it may mean that some people may become redundant within an organization as these activities uh, become automated but also you need to think about uh, business processes when uh, we introduce digital solutions uh, the processes that is the series of activities that uh, deliver a certain uh, goal will uh, in, in, in most cases will have to, to, to change. And then organizational structure and 
culture becomes uh, different. For instance, when, when we talked about inter intranets, we, we, talked, we emphasized on the importance of information sharing within an orga organization, which means that with these uh, solutions, there is a call for sharing of more information or more sharing of information across the entire organization. And this may call, uh, may call for changes with the, uh, uh, in the organizational culture. And of course, technology and uh, infrastructure will also be affected. When we implement digital solutions, you, you may probably need to phase out uh, some of the old uh, infrastructure that you, you have. But also, in order this implementation to be successful, there are factors that m will affect. And this first is commitment of the uh, leadership in that organization, project effectiveness of the project management, support from uh, uh, employee, employees, and of course you need to have uh, the right uh, uh, staff that will be able to support this uh, implementation. And then we talked about digital uh, system analysis and uh, design, where we said, uh, uh, as we in the introduction, uh, uh, as I said, usually you have uh, activities performed within an organization that these together help to create uh, value. Now, in order to implement digital solutions, first we need to analyze, and that is the, was the uh, analysis part of, of this uh, topic. By analysis, is mean, it means thoroughly uh, understanding of all the activities that comprise a particular uh, process. So for instance, we want to improve a, a procurement process of an organization, then you, you need to analyze this process, all the individuals that are involved and the role of each one of these. By analyzing this process, then we will be able to find ways to improve uh, the, the, the process. So we, we went through in class a, 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 a number of uh, processes that could be improved and we did a, a small exercise looking at uh, uh, which activities uh, may become redundant in a particular uh, process as a result of introducing uh, technology. And then we talked about design and that is uh, coming up, uh, framing up uh, how the new system should uh, look like, what it should deliver. And as part of uh, analysis uh, uh, and design, we talked about the role of uh, uh, data and information in, in decision making, uh, where we said uh, from data, we can uh, uh, generate information. So if uh, we analyze uh, data, we can come up with information. This information can provide us with knowledge, which eventually can be used for m making decisions. Now, in the past, it was not that easy to obtain uh, data, but following uh, the, uh, the widespread of uh, internet, uh, personal computers, and the web technology, today we have an uh, unprecedented amount of uh, uh, data, and that uh, phenomenon uh, is what we call, or what is known as uh, uh, big data. And we saw how companies are capitalizing on, on big data on different, uh, in different ways that companies can, uh, can benefit uh, from uh, big data. And then finally, uh, we looked at ways one can optimize uh, uh, digital business. And by optimization of the digital business, we mean how you can improve effectiveness and efficiency of digital business uh, services. So at this stage, we, we assume that one has already implemented the uh, digital uh, solutions uh, in an organization. And we are looking to on ways how you can uh, improve the effectiveness and uh, efficiency of your uh, services. And this is for the uh, obvious reason that, as I say in one, of the, uh, in one of the earlier lectures, since the business environment keeps on changing, you have to be agile. Agile in the sense that you have to be able to respond to, to changes in the market uh, space as fast as, as possible. And this is what we call uh, optimization. So it's a continuous improvement. It's an ongoing process. You never uh, rest because always 
your competitors will be watching at you and there are a lot of other people out there pro probably they are struggling to provide the same service as yours, which means if you're not able to improve on what you have, uh, sooner or later someone else will take you over. So improvement is an uh, ongoing, ongoing process and this is what we were concerned with when we talked about uh, optimization of digital business. So we look, specifically we looked at uh, uh, two uh, main uh, uh, activities when it comes to optimization of uh, business uh, safety. So one was uh, content ma uh, management uh, of your website, and that is where came from the premise that uh, studies uh, indicate uh, uh, websites uh, that are regularly uh, uh, updated are much more attractive to customers than those that uh, are never uh, updated. And of course, as we said earlier, uh, content of the, of the web is uh, the king, which means you need to be uh, very careful when it comes to what you are presenting to your uh, audience. And then we discuss the different uh, content management systems that are uh, available and factors that you need to consider when it comes to acquisition of these systems. And then we talked about uh, web analytics, and that is uh, tracking, collection, analysis, uh, measurement of data from uh, uh, the web and how you can use this uh, data to, to improve your services. And we discussed, uh, we also talked about different uh, solutions that are available there. Of course, Google is the, the leading uh, provider at the moment of uh, web analytics uh, solutions, but there are also numerous uh, others. Some of these are free, very, Google uh, at the base level is uh, free, but if you want the premium service, then you have to, to, to pay uh, for it. But also we looked at general uh, factors that you need to consider when it comes to acquisition of digital uh, solutions. So basically this was all about uh, the course. And perhaps now let's talk about the exam. So the exam is on the 13th of uh, May. 2015. This will be a four hours uh, uh, exam and the questions will be written in, in English but of course you are always uh, uh, allowed to write either to write in Norwegian or English. And The number of questions will be four. And the first question will be about the breadth uh, of your understanding, which means, as I said in the, in the beginning, that one of the objectives was to test your, uh, to introduce you to uh, concepts, uh, principles, and some frameworks of uh, digital business. So in this question, I will basically test your understanding of certain uh, concepts. It will be about four items. So you will be required to write short notes on the given uh, items. And when I say short notes, I expect you to provide the definition of uh, that term. So whether it's uh, inbound uh, marketing, I expect you to, uh, to define what inbound uh, marketing uh, is. If there are any elements that comprise that uh, uh, terminology or that concept, then I expect you to provide those elements. So if uh, inbound marketing co consists of uh, social media uh, marketing, uh, search marketing, content uh, uh, management, then I expect you to, to mention those. And more important is relevance of that uh, terminology in digital business. How is it useful? So. These terminologies could be anything that we have uh, learned in this uh, class. So it could be um, cloud computing, it could be uh, augmented uh, reality, could anything that we, we uh, zero moment of truth, whatever terminologies that we have uh, learned. So this could be picked from anywhere. 
but I'll, I will talk a little bit more of the areas that you could uh, focus and that could be useful to you. And then uh, question two up to four will be about testing uh, the depth of your understanding. So in this case, it will be, the, the question will uh, focus on one particular topic or one particular aspect and a series of questions will be asked on that. So basically, uh, I will give you a sort of a, a prompt, uh, something like a teaser or a statement or a scenario that can help you to figure out the context of the, of the question. And then it will be followed by questions such as describe uh, what is meant by, distinguish, etc. So this is w one of the uh, examples of the questions like uh, Defining a clear business model is essential for the success of a startup online business. So this is like a, a prompt, it's like a background information. Then the questions uh, will follow. What is meant by a business model? Briefly describe nine building blocks of the business model. So these are the type of uh, questions that you, will, uh, you should uh, expect or you might be given a, a role of a business manager but the questions will not fall outside what we we have uh, learned these are my, my some advice that I, I, I think uh, could be useful being myself a, a, a student these are things that I, I find useful you can use them or you you can just ignore but I, I would if I were you, first, when you attend the exam, uh, you should read the questions carefully to note all the important points that are being uh, are required in that uh, question. And then try to think about all, all the uh, ideas. Uh, try to outline the things that you would like to, uh, or you think uh, should go into the answer of that uh, question. You can write down some keywords that you think will add weight to your, uh, to your answer. And if the question is asked in, in points, then you can outline those uh, points. And by the way, if I'm asking, say, well, for instance, uh, uh, ways to attract traffic to, uh, to a website, these are about seven or six or seven. Then I expect if you write five, of them, then you will get a full mark. So it depends how many uh, points are possible from that particular uh, question. So if it's something that has uh, numerous uh, alternatives, and of course that will also be uh, reflected in the number of uh, points that you obtain, then the minimum number of points I will take is uh, five. And of course, if you write more, you, you can compensate for the, say weak point that you wrote earlier, but if you are sure of what you are doing, then five points should be enough. And then it will be very good if each point uh, that you write, write it in a new paragraph. Of course, there is a very intensive uh, uh, assessment that all oh, correction of this uh, uh, marking of your exam, four people will be involved. So uh, some, some are from this school and others from outside someone is professor that has been teaching for many years in this uh, course. So in the end, I, I hope uh, you will be judged uh, fairly. And if you are not satisfied, there are alternatives for reviewing. But I advise you to make it as clear as possible to make it easy for everyone. So you don't have to go through uh, the appeal process. So put your points uh, clear and that will be uh, helpful. Of course, allocate your time. You have four questions, four hours. Roughly, you have one hour for each uh, question. And of course, if you run out of time and you feel that you still have some points to write, you can quickly outline so that I, I get a feeling of whether you know the thing. You don't have to write, like explain everything, but if you outline uh, the question, then uh, you can get something out of it because then it gives me an impression that you know the stuff, but you didn't have enough time. A couple of weeks ago, I gave you the review uh, questions. 
And this should pretty much provide uh, a guideline or it should give you an impression of what you should expect in the, uh, in the question. I would say if you cover these questions uh, thoroughly, then you should be pretty good for the, for the exam. Of course, I'm not promising that the questions will come as they are, but most of it will be within this because I, I believe this number of uh, questions has covered almost uh, uh, everything. Yes? Okay. No, because we, we have only four questions and we, we have learned a lot of things. So the questions will be, of course, I will randomly ask questions from any uh, topic, but the coverage will be within. Yeah. yeah. And this has pretty much covered almost everything, or at least the questions for at least from every topic. So, if you go through these questions, then I guess you should be fine. And that's it, unless you have some questions. And by the way, I, 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 I'm traveling tonight. I'm, I'm going for, uh, I'm attending a course from tomorrow in Bergen. But still, if you have any uh, question, you can just send me a mail. Uh, I will be able to answer. And from Monday, I will be back, so I will be here all the time. And in case you have any uh, problem with the questions or with anything, you can just uh, see me. And the approval, I think most of you now, have, you have seen your names. And I have, of course, I didn't include uh, the names of people that did not deliver on the assignment. Uh, there was no point of keeping names of people that are not approved. So, so far, there are names of people that have been approved. and two or three that have not delivered on the last uh, assignment, which I think they can, they can deliver it before the exam. But those who say delivered only first part are now uh, removed. So, which means if you have delivered all the parts and you don't see your name, please uh, just uh, take contact with, with me and we, we can uh, sort it out. And the last thing, uh, there will be um, cause evaluation uh, for this one. Probably next year somebody else will, will teach it. But still, we would like to get some feedback that can help that person uh, improve on this course. Uh, usually, uh, it, it used to be a 15-credit uh, course, and now it's uh, restructured to 7.5. So it's under construction, which means we, we need a lot of your uh, feedback to, to help people that will teach it uh, in the future improve it. So uh, I will post that on uh, Facebook, uh, a link to, to, to that uh, evaluation. And it's going to be uh, anonymous. So write anything you want. It, nobody's going to trace you. So we just want to use it uh, as a basis for improving uh, the courses for people that will teach it uh, in the future. So anything uh, from the content to the approach of teaching, uh, just give feedback, and that will be very useful for somebody else that will teach it uh, uh, next year. So that's it. It was good to be with you, and I hope we see each other around, and good luck with your exam. <laughs>